All right, everybody, David Busher from Busher Racing here using the new Gen 2 AEM EMS box for the Evo 9. This particular model replaces the old 1320 box. And I'm just going to go over a couple of differences in the new software and how the mapping looks. This is the fuel map for this particular car. You have your fuel channels here, fuel map, and then the table down here for the fuel. In comparison, the old software looked like this. Your parameter, fuel map, table, and graph. The, uh, the new software is easy enough to use if you're used to the old software that I've been able to, I don't know, get accustomed to it to where I can't even tell a difference just in maybe two hours of use. The, uh, there's some good features about this. If you look at, here's a fuel trim window that I built. If you want to move a table around in this new software, if you click on this top bar, you'll see this little ghost window come up and you can see that it's highlighting the top of the air fuel trim table here. You can click this, it'll put both those boxes next to each other. So it's pretty quick for setting up a new template. If you want to move it back, you just bring it down here, find the same button, that'll split the window here. All these workspaces are easily saved. When you get done with something you want to do, you go to File, Save As, a workspace, and then if you have something named like I do, just click Save. It's very simple. The uh, rev limiter templates, everything comes up. This is a whole lot easier to read. Something else I want to show since this is an Evo 9. Big improvement here. It used to be that the MyVec tables in the Evo 9 were backwards. So if you wanted zero advance in your MyVec, like down here, these numbers would actually have to come up at like a minus, or I'm sorry, at about a, at 14. And to get a uh, negative number, you had to go smaller. So if you wanted to run a lot of advance, you ran a low number. If you wanted zero advance, you had to run a high number. Now the tables are right. So zero is zero advance. And up here you can see this is 25 degrees of advance. That's at the crank. So this would be about 12 and a half degrees of advance at the intake cam. I hope that made sense. O2 feedback is all about the same as it was before. This is your main target table for O2 feedback. Over here are all your um, minimum and maximum for how much you want to add or take away fuel, minimum RPM limits, that's all the same. Another feature, the knock control has been changed. The restore rate used to be in uh, crankshaft revolutions. Now it's in milliseconds. So in this example, you've got 49.2 milliseconds as it restores fuel and timing to how it's supposed to be. Uh, the one thing that's Super improved is the startup on this. I'm going to show you this car is cold. It's sitting inside, but the engine's cold. I want to show you how fast this thing. Let me connect with the ECU first. Watch how fast it fires. I don't know if you can see the screen or the uh, gauges on the dash, but the car's dead cold. Here's a coolant tip. It's 88 degrees. It's probably, I don't know, close to that here in the building. The car starts so much faster. Than it used to. That's one of the one of the best things they could have changed. There's also a tracing down here now. If you watch the bottom of the screen, it'll trace what cells it's in. You can leave it so that this you can leave it so that it'll actually stay. So when you go back to tune, you can find exactly where you were. So it's got some nice new features. The startup is it's as good as uh, any standalone I've used now. One thing that happened to me was I was kind of disgusted with some of the changes that weren't getting made to the software. I spoke to the engineers at AEM. They said that when the new Series 2 box came out, they would change some of the complaints that were out there for me and other people. I tried a few other standalones, but one thing that I learned through all this was no one's standalone is perfect. They can make all the claims they want, and uh, everything that I've personally tried, there's a glitch in everything. So as I used it, I would find something wrong, and you would contact an engineer, and they would tell you, you know, sorry, we didn't notice that, but we'll fix it. So I'm glad to see AEM stepped up, came out with this new Gen 2 box, fixed a lot of the complaints, and uh, it, I mean, it's, so far it's pretty fantastic. The drivability is 
much improved over the first generation boxes. I had the car on the dyno yesterday and a simple swap to the box was night and day startup and night and day low speed drivability. So that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video.